Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM as we continue our tribute to Roger Corman, who died on May 9th at 98, leaving an impressive legacy of films and filmmakers who learned their trade working with Corman. Roger Corman earned the nickname the King of the Bees because he could make an entertaining and profitable film for a staggeringly low price. Sometimes he could make two for that price. Tonight, we have a lineup of Corman's collaborations with Vincent Price, Low-budget thrillers adapted from the macabre works of Edgar Allan Poe. Up next from 1961, The Pit and the Pendulum. Set in Spain during the Inquisition, a young Englishman travels to a remote castle to investigate his sister's mysterious death. The castle belongs to her husband, a nobleman, played by Vincent Price. Corman appeared on TCM in 2016 to co-host a spotlight on American International Pictures, AIP. Of course, The Pit and the Pendulum, one of the studio's biggest hits, was among the films we showed, so we thought it fitting to bring you a part of that conversation. Here is Roger Corman with me in 2016 to discuss The Pit and the Pendulum. Hi there, everybody. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM's Spotlight on Films released by American International Pictures, or AIP. Joining me every Thursday night this month, my co-host, venerable director and producer, Roger Corman. Roger, great to have you back. Happy to be here. Our first film tonight is a movie that could be considered one of the best from AIP or, for that matter, from any other studio. From 1961, adapted from Edgar Allan Poe's short story, It's the Pit and the Pendulum. So you are associated with many things. One of them is that you are the definitive Edgar Allan Poe storyteller. How did that come to pass? Well, I had been making a series of low-budget films for American International and a couple of other studios, and they had a sales pattern of putting two low-budget black-and-white feature films together as a double feature. Two horror films, two science fiction films, whatever, uh, shot in 10 days for about sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. And AIP wanted me to make two of those uh, low-budget uh, horror films. And I was getting a little bit tired of this, and I also felt it was a sales gimmick that they were maybe using too often. And I said, let me have more than that, let me have 15 days, in the big time to have 15 days, and I want to shoot in color. And they said, what do you want to make? And I said, I want to do Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. And Jim agreed, and Sam, Sam Markoff, said, but Roger, there's no monster in The House of Usher. So I said, thinking fairly quickly, I said, Sam, the house is the monster. He said, okay, we'll make the picture. <laughs> what arrogance you have thinking that you could get two weeks to make an entire movie. Right. Um, so uh, you mentioned Sam Arkoff, Jim, you mentioned Jim, that's Jim Nicholson. Those were the two executives uh, at yes. AIP. Um, I get that you talked AIP into making Poe movies. Why were you interested in Poe? What made you think these would make good movies? I had always loved the work of Poe. I'd read The Fall of the House of Usher as a school assignment in, I think, the 10th grade or something like that. And I asked my parents for the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe for Christmas. They were happy to give it to me. I could have asked for a shotgun or who knows what. And I always wanted to make The House of Usher. Uh, the picture was successful, so AIP asked me to make a second one, and I chose The Pit and the Pendulum as a second film. Was it difficult to turn what were short stories into full-length screenplays? Your movies aren't long, but still there had to be some expansion of Poe's story. There was some difficulty because, as you say, they were not only short stories, but sometimes extremely short stories, just a couple of pages. So with Dick Matheson, who wrote most of the scripts, and I did, we would take the elements of the Poe short story and use it as the equivalent of a third act of the play and then try to say what led up to this and, and what would Poe have done. We wanted to stay as truthful as we could to Poe's vision. So your idea wasn't sort of to add to it, but to build up to it. Yes, exactly. Interesting. Uh, I don't know whether you recall this, but uh, the director, Ron Howard, who's a graduate of the Corman School of Filmmaking, uh, he says that the television ads for The Pit and the Pendulum was the first time he remembers a TV commercial 
getting him excited to see a movie. Do you recall the ad? Um, I don't recall specifically the ads, but I, and I didn't make them, but I collaborated with whoever did the editing on it. Uh, the ads were primarily the last scene with John Carr under the pendulum and above the pit with the pendulum coming down like this, lower and lower and lower and eventually slicing his shirt. And meanwhile, I was cutting to the gears and it was really a nice sort of montage. I was very pleased with the way that came together. And it clearly worked. It got people excited to see how that was gonna turn out for him. Here it is from 1961, featuring a screenplay by Richard Matheson, directed by my co-host, it's Vincent Price in The Pit and the Pendulum. The Pit and the Pendulum's shocking climax is one of the most striking scenes ever in a Roger Corman film. The Pendulum was constructed of wood and metal with a rubber blade. John Carr, the actor strapped under the slow swinging device, was understandably a bit nervous. John came up to me with a very worried look on his face, said Roger Corman. He asked me, Roger, do you really think that thing is safe? The director volunteered to get under the pendulum during rehearsal to show Carr it posed no danger. But as that massive blade began to swing closer and closer, Roger Corman started having second thoughts. It started coming down, and I thought, maybe John is right. A grip stopped the blade in the nick of time, convincing Carr to do the scene. Carr also had a metal plate strapped to his chest, you know, just in case. Roger Corman cast a British actress as Elizabeth, the sister, who'd go on to become a cult figure among devoted horror fans, Barbara Steele. Steele had starred in Black Sunday, director Mario Bava's influential Italian horror film. Both Steele and the movie had impressed Corman. Black Sunday had been acquired, recut, and redubbed by American International Pictures, where Corman was under contract. It became their highest grossing film to date. Corman regarded Steele as vital to the Pit and the Pendulum's success overseas and moved her name up in the credits to help sell tickets in European markets. Coming up, Corman teams with Vincent Price again with a pair of horror movie giants as well in a Poe adaptation that mixes comedy into the equation. The Raven is next on TCM. Next on TCM, The Raven, then The Mask of the Red Death, and later, Bloody Mama. TCM's got the mother of all Corman tributes today.